Um, I used to work for ASI, so it's, um, it was one of the best jobs I've ever had, actually. It was really fun, and, and they really looked after us, so thank you, Tim. Um, so I, I used to watch my dad come home from work in his suit with his briefcase, and inside of his briefcase were always these reams of computer printouts, and I used to look at them. They were fascinating and complex, and I used to think to myself, one day I want to be a businesswoman just like my dad. And I started going to leadership courses like from nine years old. And so I've done and participated in a bunch of leadership courses. I've had a, a really varied set of experiences in different countries and industries. Um, and um, I've had a lot of leadership experiences and experiences of leaders. A couple of um, challenging experiences for example, I was a CFO for an internet company um, in uh, South, Cape Town, South Africa. And the directors were young IT geeks and very, very uh, knowledgeable and energized in regards to IT, but really not much experience anywhere else. These directors were just spending the company into the ground. And on the side, also having several affairs with the admin staff. And um, it was up to me to try and explain to them, try and convince them that, um, you know, if they wanted an ongoing company, that this had to stop. Um, they wouldn't listen to me. And unfortunately, about a year and a half after I left, the whole company, which was really substantial, um, closed business. Another example. I was an auditor for an accounting firm um, in Cape Town, South Africa. And the, the boss, my boss, drove me one night, drove me to the middle of nowhere, um, to a strange house where there was a strange man. And the two of them then asked me if I would do the books for their brothel. Uh, okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Um, Another example was when I was in the Air Force. Uh, I had a commander who would mandate that everyone play basketball. And then he would literally beat up his men and women on the court. He broke an airman's nose, he broke another airman's arm. Um, and so I remember, you know, fortunately I have a foreign accent that's really helped me through my career. Um, <clears throat> So I was like, I don't know how to play basketball. And I was on the opposite side of his team. And it's all slow motion. I see this man, you know, this big, deep, big man running towards me. And someone's on the side going, pass the ball, Sarah. Oh, I think they called me Alan at that point. And, and I've got this ball in my hand, and I'm watching the commander coming for me. And, I'm looking at this ball, I'm looking at him, and I'm, what do I do? And so eventually I just kind of, yeah, <laughs> I was like, here you go, sir. Because I was just like, I'm not going to have a broken nose for this, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so, you know, I've, I've had real leadership experiences, like I've been involved with major change initiatives across the agencies. I've had to lead large cross-functional teams. I've done hiring, firing decisions. I've even gone to bat for vital legislation for the modernization of procurement. But for me, my greatest leadership challenges have actually been bad leaders. And um, so through all my courses, all my degrees, even at Air Force Officer Training School, um, even in my jobs, I've always asked this question, there has to be more to this than just the bottom line. There has to be a deeper, resonating, soul-redeeming reason for all of this. And because I didn't have that answer, I wasn't a complete leader. Because you can't lead others until you can lead yourself. Um, then, three years ago, I, uh, everything changed for me. I uh, learned something that changed who I am and how I do business and also how I lead. The chief of staff, the governor of Hawaii, said to me one day, hey, I want you to meet my good friend, economic advisor, Pono Shim. Um, 
Um, and I was saying, okay, uh, what were we going to talk about? Key economic indicators, state revenues, legislative agendas. Um, I was quickly turned around uh, because this very important, um, very well-respected economic advisor in Honolulu um, taught me instead of a set of principles, um, all, all kind of forming into one word, the word aloha. And you're like, aloha, what? Aloha is hello and goodbye for tourists on vacation in Hawaii. Yes, that's true. But it comes to find out that there is a deeper connotation to aloha. Aloha is akahai, lokahi, olu olu, ha'a ha'a, and aho nui. Aloha is kindness, unity, pleasantness, humility, and patience. It is holding your relationships tenderly without letting them drop. It is allowing confidence to be defined while still maintaining grace. It is leading as a servant and operating in ways that unite. So you might be thinking, what the hell is this? Did I register for some guru new age self-aid conference? No, you didn't, and neither did I, and I, but I can tell you, I can attest, I have seen whole programs affected by this aloha response. And um, I have myself learned these traits through my own incredible staff who waited patiently through my thrusts and throws while I took my, luck, my time to learn this truth. So I ask you to consider the aloha response. What are we trying to do in acquisition? Do we want better relationships with our contractors? How do we create successful contracts? Do we want continuous value in our government? How do we heal hurt egos and allow for treasured, beautiful, creative contracts to blossom? How do we find a place where people are wholly inspired to embrace and affect change for themselves and others? And how do we allow a safe space for innovation and opportunity? All of these questions are answered through the Aloha response. And Hawaii has taken it so seriously that they included it in a law over 40 years ago. Hawaii Revised Statute 5-7.5, the Aloha Spirit. It goes a little bit like this. It is the coordination of mind and heart within each person. Um, gosh. In the contemplation and presence of the life force. Aloha means mutual regard and affection and extends warmth and caring without any obligation in return. Aloha is the essence of relationships in which each person is important to every other person for collective existence. Aloha means to hear what is not said, to see what cannot be seen, and to know the unknowable. In, uh, in working out, um, in the exercising of uh, the duties and um, the powers of the people, and in fulfilling the services and, and obligations and responsibilities to the people, our leaders may contemplate and reside in the life presence and give consideration to the aloha spirit. Folks, this part of our statute is even included in our RFPs. How is that for quality control? So I am forever changed because of my time in Hawaii and because of working with such a diverse set of people who are actively willing to participate and practice the aloha spirit. And it's become very clear to me that this leadership tool is um, an ultimate leadership tool to be used in any place in the world. And so um, I just want to say mahalo for your time and aloha.